This is Sonic Labyrinth, released in 1995 for the Sega Game Gear and later re-released for other formats such as the 3DS Virtual Console as well as part of the Sonic Mega Collection Plus compilation from which I'm playing this on right now. The premise behind Sonic Labyrinth is that somehow at some point, Dr. Robotnik, or Dr. Eggman if you prefer, was able to replace Sonic's shoes with specially designed speed down shoes that impedes Sonic's ability to jump or run real fast. However, these shoes does not impede Sonic's ability to spin dash, or walk at a leisurely pace, or breathe for that matter. So Sonic is off to find the Chaos Emeralds by beating four bad bosses to remove the shoes from his feet so that he can run fast and control well. More on that later. Sonic Labyrinth, as the name implies, is not a traditional 2D side-scroller but rather adopts an isometric viewpoint similar to Sonic 3D Blast. Your main goal in these labyrinths is to seek out three keys that will enable you to exit the level through the gold door. Since you can't run or jump, your options boil down to either walking or using the spin dash to bounce all over the place. The spin dash, by the way, also happens to be your only means of attack, which you'll have to do in order to obtain certain keys from enemies. For the most part, keys are out in the open, you just have to find them and pick them up. In few cases, some keys are held by enemies and you have to kill them to free the key. Keys not only allow you to exit the level when all three are collected, but each time you pick up a key for the first time, a few seconds are added to your time limit. Time is added whenever you pick up a key, kill a badnik, or acquire the hourglass pickup. Each time you collide with a badnik or stage hazard, you lose a bit of time and if Sonic fails to exit the level before time runs out, he loses life. Likewise, if Sonic falls off a platform, he ends up falling into a pool of lava and subsequently dies. There are four zones in Sonic Labyrinth, each divided into four stages. First three stages are the standard Labyrinth gameplay, but on the final stage of each zone you'll start off sliding down a slope collecting rings, which will protect Sonic from one hit, but also grant you an extra life for every hundred rings collected. Boss fights start off with a wave of badniks appearing on screen before the big bad appears. Bounce around on screen, hit the boss, try not to get hit, and eventually you'll emerge victorious, and claim a Chaos Emerald before moving on to the next zone. It might sound like standard fare, but it's not all acorns and chili dogs in Sonic Labyrinth. I'm not even sure that makes sense, but I don't care, I'm leaving it in. Control is the biggest detriment to Sonic Labyrinth. Like I said, you can either walk or spin dash in this game, and sadly both have more cons than pros. Walking is where Sonic is at his most controllable. It's easy to move him around while walking and allows for more precise positioning for whenever you need to pick up keys or power-ups. The thing is that Sonic walks at a snail's pace and that means trying to get anything done by walking is an exercise in utter futility. Walking means you can't climb slopes, it means you can't kill enemies, it means you move slowly. And not just slow by Sonic standards, but slow by normal standards. A brick moves faster than Sonic walks here. Now because Sonic's walking speed is worthless, you'll end up having to use the spin dash in order to blaze through the mazes at any semblance of speed. This is done by holding down the button, any will do, and waiting for the meter to fill in order to gauge how strong your dash will be. The stronger the dash, the faster and farther you'll go. Unfortunately, the faster and farther you go, the more likely you are to ricochet off walls and bumpers that will send you careening all over the place. So if you're going to dash, aim carefully, or you'll hit a corner and bounce all over the place. Bouncing all over the place, not sure if I've hammered that point is, but you bounce all over the place and that might be a worthwhile strategy in boss encounters, but in navigating mazes, it's irritable. You could break out of a spin, but traction isn't that great. So the best strategy, it seems, would be to take it slow, except you have a rather strict time limit that requires you to move quickly, and the only means you have of moving quickly is not necessarily the most reliable, especially with the somewhat questionable collision detection. At four zones with four stages apiece, as well as a bonus stage you need to access through convoluted means to get the game's perfect ending, Sonic Labyrinth is not a particularly long game. Once you have a familiarity with the layouts, it shouldn't take you more than half an hour to clear the whole thing. And while the maps might have different gimmicks like doors, warp tiles, and moving platforms to sort of vary things up, they're all fairly similar in design, layout, and all-around emptiness. Even once I've learned to tolerate the icky controls, it was a struggle to keep going because I was falling asleep at times during my run in Labyrinth. Maybe it was the slowness, maybe it was the concept, but by the halfway point it felt like I was running on fumes. 
I'd imagine the mazes were made easy and simplistic to take into account the lousy control setup, but it doesn't really help matters. Even one of the later levels which comprised navigating doors to make it to where you need to go, a classic trope of lazy level design, didn't exude feelings of excitement and frustration, but rather that of general apathy. Boss battles failed to be intense, as all I needed to do was perform spin dashes and bounce around like an idiot to do them in. It's not always the most sound strategy, but it does work, making use of the sporadic physics and convoluted concept. Gameplay in Sonic Labyrinth might be a dud, but at least the presentation is alright for the most part. Sonic Labyrinth utilizes the same isometric perspective that was used by Sonic 3D Blast, and while Labyrinth lacks the other game's pre-rendered look, it does pull off the isometric viewpoint rather nicely on limited tech. That's not saying a whole lot considering the sameness of the mazes, the set pieces are simple looking and do little to distract from the monotonous stage layouts, really it doesn't matter whether there's candles or stars in the void, you still have that samey looking checkered board, and I could generally do without the seizure whenever I pick up a power up, but Sonic, foes, and whatnots look somewhat decent looking if nothing else. It's still a rather bland looking game, but it's still decent for what it does do, and there's not much to fault there. Meanwhile, over at the sound department, we have some rather mediocre sounding music. And music is usually a strong point in these Sonic games, but outside of the opening title theme, which is somewhat upbeat, the tracks in Sonic Labyrinth are kinda, sorta, meh. I wouldn't go so far as to call these terrible. Well, apart from this jingle, I'd just call that Ear Rape Central, headed by the Queen of Ear Rape, but I digress. The rest of the tunes are just there to fill in an empty auditory void, and that's probably the nicest thing I could say. Sound effects are typical quality sound effects you'd get from a Sonic game on the Game Gear. I leave it to you to decide if that's a good thing or not, but par for the course as far as I'm concerned. Overall, Sonic Labyrinth is not a good game. To call it the worst Sonic game ever made would be a bit of an overstatement, and also we live in a world where the Sonic Boom games exist, but this felt like a bad idea that somehow got approved to turn into a video game. While something could have been done with a slow Sonic game, the lack of control, the lack of stage variety, and the overall lack of fun are factors that enforces the ill conceivability of Sonic Labyrinth. I suppose this could very well be a case of your mileage may vary and this could be enjoyed by someone out there. The game does have its fans after all, but I'm just not one of those fans. At the end of the day, if I wanted to play a game where Sonic the Hedgehog was bouncing all over the place, I'll just play Sonic Spinball. I might be terrible at that game, but I'll enjoy that one a hell of a lot more than I did Sonic Labyrinth.